Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please take a minute to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, give me a like, or share this video with your friends. Today's video is going to focus on upgrading the fuel pump wiring in a Fox body. If you're putting a large aftermarket fuel pump in one of these cars, you're just not going to get the advertised flow rate if you use the factory wiring. In fact, the factory wiring on these cars is 14 or 16 gauge even, runs from the front to the back, then back up to the front again. There could be as much as 32 feet of that thin wire in the circuit. And the new fuel pump is going to consume a lot more amperage. Now, when you bought the fuel pump, you probably got some instructions. I'm willing to bet a lot of you threw these instructions away. But let me just read you from this Aeromotive uh, 340 Stealth instruction kit, something that you should really pay attention to. The factory fuel pump wiring may not be sufficient to handle the current draw of the Aeromotive 340 Stealth pump. To achieve the advertised flow at pressure, the use of an aftermarket wiring kit, such as Aeromotive part number 16301, including 10 gauge wire and a direct alternator supply point is required. That's a real requirement. And in fact, if you put a pump like this 340 Stealth in one of these cars and you use the factory wiring, you might only get as much as 60% of the advertised flow rate. Aeromotive are good because they conveniently include a little chart here showing the amperage consumption of the pump. The amperage consumption for this pump at 340 liters per hour at about 40 PSI is uh, around 15 amps. Your factory pump probably consumes less than four. This, uh, this pump is almost four times as big as the factory pump. So that wiring is just not sufficient. So, so today we're going to put a 10 gauge wiring harness for a large fuel pump in this Fox body. It's going to run from the starter solenoid up here to the back of the car. It's going to include a fuse and an 80 amp relay. And that's going to provide enough electrical power to get the full capacity of the pump. Here's the basic procedure. We're going to run a 10 gauge wire from the starter solenoid, from the battery side of the starter solenoid, underneath the car to the back. Usually the best way to do that is run it ahead, along with this wiring along the rad, and then down following the uh, fuel line to the back. Most of the time the right move is to follow the fuel lines to the back. So take that out into the inner fender area here, come along through here, out underneath here where the fuel lines are. You can already see some of those clips have been removed to put the subframes in. Then we'll follow along fuel lines back here to the back of the car, up over the rear axle, and then we're going to feed the line in through here to the back. Once we get through, we're going to splice it into this harness here. So we're going to disc here are the parts we're going to need for this job. Spool of 10 gauge wire, heavy wire or 10 gauge harness fuse holder, 10 gauge relay harness, 80 amp relay, and a generous amount of wiring loom. Plus we'll need a fuse not shown in this little pile of parts. Why use an 80 amp relay, you ask? Well, it's easy to get these 80 amp relays with a 10 gauge relay harness. And this relay will never fail in this application. Where if you use a 30 or 40 amp automotive relay in this application, sometimes they burn up and then you got no fuel pump. Usually the best place to start is to start feeding the wire from the middle. So you'll feed it off the spool forward to the starter solenoid. Then you'll feed it uh, to the back. And it's easier to measure just how much you need at the back. This way, cut the wire, you don't waste that much, and you can start looming it from here forward. You have to pop a couple plastic clips on the inner fender liner to feed the wiring through. Loom the new 10 gauge wire so that it doesn't chafe and tape the wire to the loom at the end to make it easier to pull through 
without stripping the loom off. Make sure that you avoid any moving suspension parts. The wiring can run behind brake hard lines in the wheel well area and then follow the fuel lines back into the engine bay. Run the wire along with the other harness in front of the radiator. Then behind the battery to the starter solenoid area. Now we've got our wiring run up to the starter solenoid. <clears throat> I'm going to put the fuse up here. We're going to start making this up. So I'm going to start with this fuse holder. It's got a loop wire on it. So we'll start by cutting that. I'm going to use a solder seal connector to connect these two pieces together to the fuse holder. I'm going to slide this in until I just have this wire into the solder ring. Then I'm going to slide the other piece together and we're going to try and mesh those wires together and get the meshed part centered in the solder ring. We're going to grab our heat gun and we're going to heat this up. You got to let this cool down in a straight state. Don't start bending it around or working it while it's hot. Our next step is we're going to use one of these eye connectors to connect it to the uh, starter solenoid, to the battery side of the starter solenoid. There's days where it doesn't pay to be a big brutish guy. This ain't one of them. When it comes to crimping this stuff, crimp it good. And if we have any extra wire, we're going to pull that slack back through to where our spool is so that we have the wire tight. We'll also do some zip tie in here to get this front part of the run all secured. And then uh, we can start uh, looming it up and pulling it into the back of the car. Attach the end of the wire to the starter solenoid and lay the fuse holder and wire along with the existing wire in that area neatly. Then pull any excess slack back to tighten the wiring up. Take care to keep the harness away from direct contact with the radiator core. I use zip ties to tie the harness up to the existing harness in this area and make it neat, starting at the driver's side of the rad support and working back toward the wiring spool. Once you get the wiring secured past the inner fender liner, you can put the plastic clips back in. Stretch the new wiring out to the back of the car to get a measure of where it needs to be cut off. Then cut the wire and finish looming the entire length of the wiring. Tape the loom to this end of the wire too, then begin stringing it along the fuel lines towards the back of the car, tying it up with zip ties as you go. Finally, feed it over the top of the fuel tank to the back of the car where the pump connector is located. Once you have your wiring pulled back in here. The next step is to splice it into the factory harness. You see that connector? That's the connector that ties the body harness to the fuel tank harness. And inside there is the factory fuel pump wiring and the factory fuel pump sender wiring. So we're going to open that connector up. We're going to identify the fuel pump wiring and we're going to uh, splice this uh, new harness in through a new relay and into that uh, body side of this connector. So you take that connector apart, you pull back the uh, wiring loom on it so you can get a look at the wiring. And what you're going to find is you've got a yellow wire, a red wire, and two black wires in here. And if you look very carefully you will see that this red wire is a heavier gauge wire. That's the fuel pump positive. And I'm going to make note of the fact, or you should make note of the fact, that in these connectors, the, uh, the pair of wires are directly across from each other. So this red wire is across from a black wire. And that black wire is the fuel pump negative. So when we flick it around to the other side, we can see that's where our red wire is. That's our, this is our fuel pump positive. This is our fuel pump negative. And then the other two that are across this way 
are the fuel are the fuel level sender. So that's fuel pump positive there, and that's fuel pump negative there. And it's red on the back. To double check that you've selected the right wires, use a multimeter between the pump wires on the harness and cycle the key, watching for a momentary 12 volt signal. So the wire up procedure is as follows. We're gonna cut the fuel pump wiring in the factory harness back just a little ways here where we can still get at it but where we've got enough stub on the factory connector. Then we're going to use the body side of that harness as the trigger circuit for our new relay harness. That's these thin wires on the new relay harness. The thin wires. Then we're going to take and feed the new power feed, which we have run back here, into one of these heavy 10 gauge wires on the new relay harness. And we're going to tie the other heavy 10 gauge wire to the fuel pump feed side on the connector side of this. So that, that will run uh, 10 gauge wiring, that'll run our power from our through our 10 gauge wire up through the connector. And then when it's plugged in, when it's plugged in up here, it'll go straight to the fuel hat and you'll have about 18 inches or so of uh, smaller gauge wiring. Then we're going to take the other side of the wiring from this connector, the ground, and we're going to ground it. And one of the best places I've found to ground it is you clean this uh, fuel tank strap boss off with a wire wheel. You drill a little hole in there and then you ground that directly with uh, a self-tapping screw and an eye connector. So you're grounded directly to the chassis here. And that completes the circuit. Then when you turn the uh, key on, it energizes the original fuel pump circuit, which triggers the new relay. Then that supplies power through that new 10 gauge circuit to the fuel pump and your fuel pump power delivery problems are solved. Solder seal connectors are helpful here because they give you a quality connection in a tight space. I use an air die grinder with a brass brush to clean up the surface. A right angle drill is also helpful to work in a tight space like this, especially if the tank is still in the car. You hear the pump run? Starts right up. Okay, that's the entire install. When you're done, because it can get wet back here, it's not a bad idea to uh, Put a little RTV in this center plug on the relay harness, but this relay doesn't have a center pin, so it's not all that important. You're just going to tuck some of the stuff back up in here. This will probably click back up in there. Zip tie up the relay in place, which I'm not going to do just yet because I want to jumper that harness in order to uh, get the fuel out of this tank but neaten it up just a little bit and you are done. Now you got good power all the way to the back. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.